Hello there guys, my name's Matt and today I want to talk to you about how to do, how to run cables, how to do your housing electrics and I'm going to be going through ring circuits, uh, so basically a ring main, lighting circuits, connecting up your boiler, doing a thermostat, um, basically everything that you need in order to wire up an apartment or a house, just a general setup. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this video is because I spent such a long time on Google trying to figure out how to do it. Um, I ended up having a pretty bad conversation with my uh, previous electrician. Um, kind of told him to f off a, a bit because he um, he came round, he kept on putting my work out, and we just couldn't communicate properly. I got another electrician in the end. We got on very well and um, got my consumer unit connected up. Um, so basically, all of this has been done based on about uh, f four or five days spent on Google trying to figure out the building regulations, what I need to do properly. Um, and um, then got it checked by an electrician, NIC approved um, electrician to check it all off, make sure it was correct. Um, and so basically I'm sharing with you my time, or what I spent my time doing, um, and I'm gonna be starting off with the ring main um, and talking about cable sizes and what you need to get, what kind of tools you need in order to do the whole thing. So. Um, I, I got a quote for about £2,700 for the um, for running all the cables, doing the second fixing and installing the consume unit and because I did all of the running of the cables and the second fixing I ended up only getting charged 750 quid for doing this consume unit and connecting up at the main house so you can save quite a lot of money um, by by doing this yourself. So. If you want to stick around, then hopefully you'll learn something. So starting off with the ring main, um, all you want to do is basically figure out where you want to put your consume unit first for all of the electrics. Um, this is all going to be boxed in at the end. And you basically want to run a 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable. And that's just basically a, an earth and a neutral and, an, and a live wire all in one cable. You run that leaving quite a lot of spare so you can move the consumer around if you need to. You always leave a bit extra spare just because you don't want to be ripping out the wall again if you haven't got enough in there um, to just get the cable um, length um, that you need. So basically running in straight lines, you've got to do right angles and straight lines um, and go leaving quite a lot of spare, go down from the consumer unit and then um, you're using a cable like this. So you've got the blue, so I'll just show you there, you've got the a blue sheathed cable, which is the neutral on the left, and you've got a brown sheathed cable on the right, and you've got an earth in the middle. And if you remember in science, um, what, with to make a complete circuit, you can actually just use one wire and go from the positive side of your battery to the to the bulb and then back to the new to the negative side of your battery again so one of these cables actually is a complete circuit you can go from your supply to your load and then back to the supply again so when I'm saying cable I actually mean a cable that has three wires in it that was one thing that I didn't know when I started because it was a little bit confusing in terms of um, talking about cables, but what that actually does, it allows you to run everything in a in parallel circuit. So if one thing does break, um, you can st all the other connections still work. Like that works especially well for things like lights when they're running parallel. Um, and the same thing for if a, if a plug socket blows, then it is running parallel and that plug socket is just isolated and it doesn't matter if that's blown, the rest of them will still work, although you still want to replace that thing. So, so basically starting off the, at the ring, uh, with the ring, run a cable straight down and I've chosen to put mine in the ground because I've got an insulated floor and I'm running it on top of chipboard on top of an insulated floor uh, so it's a floating floor set up I'm running it along the wall under the ground to my first plug socket over here and it basically the cable comes out I chop it and then I bring another cable back in leaving quite a lot of spare in case I want to move that um, plug socket around then I go along the along the floor again, so I've gone back down into the ground and then I've gone along the floor and then back up again and then bring the cable out, back in again, down to the ground and then same along to this one, same to this one and then I've got a separate ring for the kitchen uh, I'll tell you why in a second and then I've got another one here 
and then another one there, another one there, and then it goes back up into the consumer unit again, and I leave the cable hanging out, and the electrician deals with all that. And we're using a, a ring, because what that does is it allows any of those so plug, plug sockets to be supplied from either side of the cable at any given time. And it means that you can increase the rating of the circuit to 32 amps rather than 20 amps, which would be for one uh, radial circuit. So a radial circuit is basically like a lighting circuit where you only go out with one cable, which has three cables inside of it, uh, to the load, and that goes back again. That's a radial circuit. But with a ring, you go all the way around and back to the, <coughs> to the uh, consumer unit again. So if you're... If you're just doing a radio circuit, it's rated at 20, 20 amps um, for a 2.5 millimeter cable, but with uh, a ring, it's 32 amps. So it gives you just more power uh, to run more things off those plug sockets. Um, and that's typically, typically what's done in um, any given house. Um, so that's a ring main. Uh, I've got a separate ring main for the kitchen because for things like toasters um, and things that use heating elements, or like a kettle, for example, they can go faulty, and there's water in the kitchen, so you don't want um, these things to trip and then turn the rest of the electrics off in the sockets in the, in the rest of the room. So you do that on a separate ring, so that if it does trip, then everything else can still work. So to do the, um, the ring main in the kitchen, exactly the same principle, this time I've run it through a service gap in the ceiling, and the service gap is basically just, I've lowered the ceiling slightly with some stud um, wood, two by four, stud wood and screw that into the um, joists at a right angle, uh, running right angle to the joists. And I've done that because you need at least 50 millimeters between space between your the end of your ceiling and the position of where the cables are. So, um, and if you're doing it through joists, then you need to do it in the middle of the joists. And that's just basically to stop screws and stuff getting poked through and touching the cables at any given time after you've done the installation. Because if someone else moves in here, then they need to, they know that there's at least 50 millimeters gap from where they're screwing in to where the cable might be. Um, and there's things that you can use to detect cables and stuff like that, but that's just the regulations for, for that. Uh, I should say now that I'm not a professional electrician. I'm just giving you ex advice based on, um, I'm giving, basically giving myself advice in the future. If I decide to do electrics again, I then can look at this video and see what I did in the, in the past and then I don't have to do any more Google. I literally spent like five days on, on Google trying to figure out what to do. Um, and I think in this particular case, I think it was just about worth it. Um, but in some jobs, like it's just like not worth it at all. We just give it to someone else to do. But in this case, I think it was just about worth it for doing. And I can now give this information to you. Um, so, so for the kitchen, I've basically got the uh, consuming a cable running for a 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable, that's twin and earth, running across the ceiling in a straight line, and then it goes in a right angle down here, uh, across the ceiling at a right angle, and then down to my first plug socket, which is down here. And this is a two gang um, socket. I've got links for all the products that I've used in the description so that you don't have to try and produce your own shopping list. Um, and there are some useful items in there that I've got links out to Amazon or eBay, where the cheap, cheapest places that I found them. Um, so you can directly purchase from there if you want to. Um, so we've got the uh, first one here. The cable comes out, goes back in, goes down into the ground, goes to my second one, which comes up from the ground again to this. Like I said, you need to make sure that everything's running in straight lines. So. I've left quite a lot spare. Come, come back down into the ground again. Don't worry about this. This is actually a, this is called a fused spur. This is slightly different. I'll show you that in a second. Down into the ground again. Along here and up to my uh, final plug socket, um, which is it's actually not the final plug socket. There's another one here, which will be going into a breakfast bar. Um, so, like I said earlier, talking about rings, uh, this is currently running, these, all this kitchen ring main is actually on a, on a radial circuit because it, the plugs will still work if I turn it on at the, at the fuse board, um, but it's, it will only be rated to 20 amps because I've not completed the circuit. I've still got two more plug sockets to put on here. 
Uh, but once that's done, it will be raised to the 32 amps. Um, so um, that's the kitchen ring. And off the kitchen ring, for cer certain applications like putting, running your extractor fan, for example, uh, which will be rated at th 3 amps, you want to have protection on that. So what you do is you have a, and for turning it on and off, um, you have a, a fused spur. And a fused spur is basically a spur, it's literally just a, an extra cable that comes off the any given plug of the ring main, or any uh, given supply of the ring main, and runs to a fused switch, which just basically has the, will basically have a three amp fuse in here, in here, and um, protect this circuit, this appliance, and enable me to turn it on, on and off from the counter. So if I want to turn that off when I go on holiday, or um, you can use it to turn dishwashers on and off. In this particular case, I'm using it for a dishwasher, <coughs> which is down here. It's just another plug socket. Um, but I don't want to pull the dishwasher out whenever I go away or want to turn it off or want to do any maintenance work. <clears throat> so I just want to have the dishwasher plugged in all the time and if I want to turn it on, off, on and off, I can turn it off from the wall here. So, and I'm, for a dishwasher, I'll put a 13 amp fuse in there. Um, and it's literally just a, a switch with a fuse on it. If you like these, um, these sockets, um, there's a link in the description for those as well. It's basically a brushed metal socket. Uh, I think they look pretty nice up against a white background. I think they'll look pretty snazzy. So they're um, the cheapest place I found was on eBay. Um, and it's called the B British Electrical Nexus Metal Front Plate Switch, if you want to search it for yourself. Um, so I think those look pretty good. Uh, and to show you what's actually happening here, so you can see to, to wire up a fuse switch, what you want to do is you, you can see, first of all, I've got one cable coming in and one cable going out, and then I've got one cable going to this one, and then I've got another cable going from this one to the, the appliance. And it will pretty much be the same setup for any appliance that you're doing, it's the same for the extractor fan. So that means that I've got three blues in here because I've got three cables which have three wires inside each one. So like I mentioned earlier, each cable is a circuit. So this twin and earth cable, they've got three of them coming out of this, this hole here. So that means I've got one cable coming in from the supply from the consumer unit, I've got one cable going out to the next uh, plug socket in the ring main. And then I've got one cable going out to this fuse spur. So I've got three blues, three browns, which are lives. So three, three neutrals, three browns, which are lives. And then I've got four earths, which are three of those cables that I just mentioned. And I've got one more earth because this is a metal back box. So the back box is basically the thing that, that holds this plug socket into the wall. And when you have a metal one, you need to make sure that you earth the box itself. And I'll show you here, you should be able to see up there, there is a cable running into the back of the back box, just there, you can see it. And it's got a brass connection on it. And what you wanna do is you just wanna strip the uh, three core and earth cable and take out a section of the earth. And you can use a cable stripper like this, it's called an automatic cable stripper. Um, like I said, I've, I've got links in the description for all the products, this is amazing. It will save you so much time using, rather than using a pair of pliers. I'll just show you how it works. <clears throat> so here's a three core and earth cable that you want to strip. And I'll do it on the ground so you can see it. So you literally just get your cable. You put it into the, the little stripper and you just press the button and it strips the cable. And so now I've got this stripped, I've got the three exposed wires, and then I can do exactly the same with the brown when I want to connect it, and the blue when I want to connect that. So I'll literally do exactly the same. So I've got the brown in there. And then there's my exposed wire. It's like, it's just ridiculous, it's the best tool that I've ever bought for, it, it's just, it just saves so much time. It's ridiculous. Like imagine trying to do that with a pair of tweezers. Not tweezers, sorry. Um, 
can't think of the word, things that snip cables. Um, I did that earlier and, and basically the reason why those are good is because you don't want to decrease the amount of surface uh, cross-sectional area of copper being used because if you don't have as much cross-sectional area it can overheat in areas of the wire. So you don't damage the wire at all by using that cable stripper. Um, so, and that's one of the things that you need to keep in mind if you're a qualified electrician. I'm not a qualified electrician. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is advice for myself in the future. Um, and a disclaimer is you, um, that none of the advice that I'm giving is from a qualified electrician. This is just to help you run cables in your house. And um, please do not rely on my own advice only because I'm not a qualified electrician. But this should help you to save quite a lot of money um, because it did with my electrician and I managed to save about two grand and um, he got the, all of the wiring approved afterwards. Like It's called third party NIC approval. Um, so I get the certificate after that once it's approved by him. So that is the fuse spurs done and the dishwasher and extractor fan. And so now the cooker connection unit. So basically, uh, when you have a cooker, you um, because it's, it's such a high load, it draws so much current, you need to have a six millimeter cable, or in my particular case, a six millimeter cable. Uh, that's, the, that's probably the largest cable you'll need. And it's just a lot thicker. You can see there, six, it's six millimeter twin and earth cable. And I'm doing it on a radial circuit, and it basically comes straight out again of the consume unit in the service gap. And then it goes, turns a right angle, and then goes down into my kitchen, into an isolator switch, which is a cooker isolator switch, at rated at 45 amps. Once again, link in the description for that. I got that, in, that from, uh, I think, tool station or screw fix. Um, and then I leave the wires coming out, <coughs> flipping, coming out of here, then back in again, and then around to my cooker connection unit, which after going down into the ground again, I'm going to my cooker connection unit, um, which is here. It's called a CCU. And you can see at the back there, that I've got a blue wire and a brown wire and a earth. So that's all of them. And then I've got my an extra bit of earth, which is the same cable from inside the cooker connect, uh, the six millimeter twin and earth cable. I want to make sure that all the wiring is consistent. Uh, go into my back box. So there's another, it's another metal back box, um, and you can see there at the back, I've got another um, cable going to the back box. And with all the exposed earth wires, you need to make sure that you've completely covered the earth wire with a piece of earth sheathing. This is a three millimeter earth sheathing. Very, very cheap. I got 100 meters here for about £3.50. Uh, and you need to make sure that the earth sheathing is covering the entire wire apart from where it's connected at one end and connected at the other end. So you might want to make sure there's no exposed wire because if it touches other wires and things like that, it can short circuit things. So make sure that you completely cover up your wires and, um, until the actual point that you're connecting it at the, the, the unit you're connecting it to and the back box or whatever it's being connected to. Um, so that is the oven done. Now moving on to the boiler. So I've got a boiler here, which I'm going to be mounting on the wall here, and I'm putting the switch on the side. And this is all going to be encased in a, um, a kitchen cabinet. Um, and for the boiler, all you need is another radial circuit with a 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable, running from the consume unit across the wall, down to my boiler. And I've got like a, a basically a, a joint kind of back box so that these things can be connected um, very closely together and I've got my supply here on the right doesn't doesn't need to be either in, in a particular orientation or order I've got oh sorry the supply is on the left and this is the thermostat cable so I've got my supply ending up here it's a radial circuit so it only goes one way out ends up here and then that will be connected to a switch which turns the boiler on and off and then I've got another cable here which is actually a three core and earth cable 
and that is for controlling the thermostat. And with a three core and earth cable, I've got a, a black wire and a gray wire and a blue wire and an earth wire. So the blue is a neutral, the earth is an earth, and the black wire can be either a constant live or a switch live, uh, or the other way around. And what that basically means is one of the wires will always be live, and then one of the wires will, will be deciding bet between turning the, the boiler on and off. So it will be a switch live. <clears throat> So that basically means that in every, any given time, the, the boiler can decide whether it wants to be on or off and remain on for the amount of time or programming that this thermostat is telling it what to do. And the same with the extractor fan, like in the bathroom, for example. Like once you've turned the switch on, it turns the extractor fan on. But when you turn the switch off, it can still decide to remain live with the constant live um, after it's been signaled to be turned off. Um, by the switch live uh, and that just allows you to run things uh, with a control um, so basically for a for this thermostat you've got you just basically need to run a three core and earth cable this is a 2.5 millimeter three core and earth cable it doesn't necessarily need to be it can be a 1.5 millimeter three core and earth cable I just I bought this one and it was um, they gave me the wrong product but I ended up using it because I didn't know at the time. And it's there's no difference. It's just easier to run the 1.5 millimeter between that three core and earth cable. That is going to my position of the thermostat. I've lost, left plenty there so I can move it if I want to, chase it left or right in and out of the wall. Uh, most people, if you're watching this and you're, and you're an electrician and you think this shouldn't go next to the front door, I know that. Um, it's just the position that I thought was most convenient for me because I want to walk in and look at the thermostat straight away and turn it on and off. I've got a very, very well sealed front door so it won't affect the temperature too much. So that's just my choice. Um, and the next thing, I've done all of the kitchen and the boiler and okay, one more thing in the kitchen. For the, for the uh, copper wires, copper pipes that are coming out of the um, the floor uh, for the gas and for the uh, water main you need to bond them with an earthing cable and bonding is basically um, so this is a 10 millimeter conduit cable or earthing cable and that is that literally just runs in a straight line it's just a single copper wire inside a, a, a green and yellow sheathed cab um, cabling and it's just, it goes straight from the uh, consumer unit, which is where it will be earthed, and I've just run it straight down the wall here because this is going to be covered with, with units, um, kitchen units. And I'm just going to basically um, wrap this. This is called a, I can't remember the name for this, but it just basically wraps around your copper pipe at the closest point to the ground. So with my um, my water main, for example, I'm just going to wrap this uh, probably around here, the most convenient position, and then terminate my earth on this connector here. And that just bonds, it, it's called bonding, it bonds the electrics to your, um, it earths your, your copper pipes to your uh, consumer unit. It's just for safety, extra protection. Um, so in case, I don't know, I think lightning strikes or short circuiting of things in the room. Um, in this particular case, I've got, I've got plastic pipe running into the building, so it's probably not necessary, but I'm just doing it to follow standards. Also with the, the copper pipe for my gas coming in, it's all plastic pipe in the ground and then goes to copper pipe around the building. So it doesn't necessarily need to be, be, be earthed, like, but in practice, it does need to be earthed. So I've just done it anyway, so I've got two, earth cables that are 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Again, once again, there's a shopping list at the bottom there so you can see it, you don't have to try and remember all these names. Um, so that's all the kitchen done. Then I'm gonna talk about lighting. So lighting circuits, I did mine slightly differently, but you can do electrics um, uh, in more than one way. In most other tutorials you'll find on YouTube, um, you will find that people, get a supply from the consumer unit 
to your lights and then they'll go from that light to the next one. So there'll be two cables hanging out there and then they'll get another uh, wire from the cable from the, their switch to that first light. So there'll be three cables hanging out. In my case, I've got two cables hanging out because I've used, I've supplied the switch with power and then I've powered the light from the switch and then I've gone to my next light that I want in the chain. So um, the reason I did it my way, uh, this way, is because um, the electrician I was talking to said supply the switch first and then go on and do the whatever you need to do after that. And this is the communication issue I had with him because I wouldn't have done it like that if I, if I knew that that's not the way that you normally do it. So I'm just going to giving you the explanation of what I've done versus what uh, is normally done in industry, but it doesn't make a difference and it's still been approved um, for, for this particular build. Um, so like I said, take your own advice. Please don't take my advice. I'm just showing you how I've done it. So I've got a, for, for lighting circuits, you need a 1.5 millimeter twin and earth cable which is slightly thinner cable than the 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable because the um, the lighting circuits in the the lighting circuits in the uh, the lights only run at six amps. So you basically need one cable coming out from the um, you need one cable coming out from the consumer unit to your light switch. In my case, to my light switch. Uh, and then I've got another cable running out to the first light in the chain and then I've got another cable running to the next light in the chain and that's the number of lights that I want for that particular circuit so I've left it and that's it but normally you would go one, one cable from the consumer unit to your light and then one cable from the next, that light to the next light and then one cable from the switch to the first light in the chain and you use that to turn it on and off. Um, and uh, you can actually use one supply to supply many switches. So what I've done for the kitchen and the bathroom and the uh, bedroom lights is that I've got one cable coming out from the one, one, one point five millimeter cable coming out from the consumer unit across the ceiling and down to this first light which is the kitchen light and then I've got another supply going to this light and another supply going to this light all supplied off this one so literally all you do is you get your cable down from the consumer unit to here and then get another 1.5 millimeter cable going around to this one and another 1.5 millimeter cable going from around to this one and uh, the electrician didn't like that particularly because he has to do a lot more wiring on this one um, because you're, you're loading up the light switch a little bit um, but the the lights the reason why this one's loaded up a lot more is because it's got a two-way switch in it as well so there's more cables hanging out but um, that's a perfectly good way of wiring light, lighting circuits um, up and you can just basically have one cable going to the consumer unit and list it as bedroom, kitchen and bathroom light um, and it's under one breaker circuit on a six, six, amp breaker, six amp MCB breaker. Don't worry about the terminology too much, it's, um, it's not, not something you have to worry about if you're not wiring that up. <coughs> so I've got these all supplied, um, like the same as the other one, I've got one cable going out from this, first is the kitchen light to my kitchen light. Um, and then I've got one cable going from here to my ceiling light, which is over there. And then another one, because I've got two switches on here, to my wall lights. I've got one over there and one over here for my bedroom. And then I've got, and on this one, I've got one cable going from here to the ceiling light in the bathroom inside here. And just to add a little bit to this, if you want to have a two-way switch where you've got, you're able to control this light switch at another position, I've got another position over here which is next to the bed. So if I want to turn on and off the bedroom ceiling light and or the bedroom wall lights, I can turn it off over there just as I do over here 
Um, and all you need to do to do that is, you know that <coughs> three core on earth cable I was talking about earlier? All you need to do is run one cable over to there, a three core on earth cable, for, for one switch. And then if you want to control two switches, you want to run another three core on earth cable over there for the other switch. So I've got a, I've got a two gang light switch on both sides. I could have just had one and had the control of one of those lights, like the ceiling light, just so I could have just had one two-way switch, but I've got two, so I can control both the wall lights and the, um, the uh, ceiling light um, from both points. <coughs> and that's pretty much it. I did not wire this light switch up myself, so I don't know how that's been done particularly well, but when they, I just asked the electrician to do the consumer unit and then to wire up this one because it was the most complicated one and he just said copy the same setup over there and that's how um, it's all uh, and, and it worked perfectly fine because I just copied the same setup. Um, there are other, loads of other YouTube videos on how to do two-way light switching so that one you'll have to look at someone else's video um, for, for that but for the for the bathroom what you want to do is you get your supply to this light switch which has been daisy chained over from here so I've got a supply to here and I've then gone and supplied here and I've gone and supplied here and you want to get for the extractor fan because it needs a control it needs to be another three core and earth cable so from here I've got a three core and earth cable going up from this light switch feed another one in to a isolator switch which is a three pole isolator switch link in the description again for that product and then to the position of the extractor fan which is just at the edge of this hole that I've drilled because my extractor fan will be powered um, from here and I don't want it to be in the hole because that's where it's going to evacuate from but I've got it just at the edge of the hole uh, and I've chased it into the wall so it's just at the edge there um, and <coughs> I've also got a, uh, a, I've got a mirror light here, so I'm not turning the mirror light on and off here, but I'm supplying the mirror light with power. So this this switch will be um, turning the ceiling light on and off, but I'm also supplying from the supply that I got from over here. A, I'm, I'm supplying a mirror light which will have a switch integrated within the mirror light like a touch a touch um, switch so all you need to know is running the cables wise uh, just running the cables wise um, I've got supply going from there to there to there and then I've got another cable which is 1.5 mil going to the mirror over here and I've got a three core and earth cable going to the extractor fan isolate a switch and then another three core and earth cable go from there to the extractor fan and then I've got another 1.5 millimeter two twin earth cable going to the uh, ceiling light <coughs> and so that's it I think that's pretty much it for the electri electrics <coughs> um, if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments in the description I've, I've pretty much covered everything that I think needs to be covered. I'll do another video on um, how to do some of the uh, fixing of, um, of these. This is called second fixing when you put, put these switches on. Um, but there are loads of really good YouTube videos on how to do the second fixing for lots of different plug sockets. Um, the only one that was really particularly difficult was actually the, uh, the fuse spur and usually when you buy, if, if you buy the plug sockets that I have put in the link in the description it will have the diagram on how to wire it up, it's pretty easy, it didn't take me that long to figure out, it was mainly just the, the main thing that takes time is just the figuring out of how to put wires in at the right place before you put, get the plaster around and get all that done um, or chasing it out the wall and things like that so that takes a lot of planning and making sure it's right and you should be able to save yourself quite a lot of money. Um, I, like I said, I saved about two grand worth of electrical um, electricians' bills. Um, so hopefully this video has helped you. I've just I've got a I've also got a secondary meter here. Um, so if you're doing a property that you want to rent out, 
then make sure you get a secondary meter because then you can check the differential between your current house and the sec and the house that's being the, the apartment that's being used because we're running this off a separate supply from the main house. Um, just ask your electrician to install it. Just say I want a secondary a check meter. It's called um, so that you can check the difference. And um, we've got a Hager. It's called a Hager consumer unit, but. Um, there are loads of different brands out there. We chose this one because it sounds particularly good for um, like sound systems and stuff like that. It's just got good connections on it. Um, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, this has saved me, this video, if I watched it before, would have saved me about five days worth of Googling research. Like seriously, I wish I would have found this video myself, um, not to blow my own trumpet, but this is the most condensed version of how to do um, housing electrics that I, I think you could find online so um, if you like it please give it a thumbs up please leave a, a comment in the description if there was anything unclear and I'll, I'll sort it out and make sure that you get your answer quickly um, and if you if you like the videos that I put up then please subscribe to the channel because I'm still finishing off this project so I've got a video on how to do vinyl floor um, gluing down vinyl flooring and we've also got videos on how to do um, things like fixing the toilet in, plumbing for the toilets, um, getting the right gradients on those things um, for the drop outside so that the soil pipe can get the right flow on it. Um, so there's loads of different things that include uh, building regulations and stuff like that um, that will hopefully be helpful for you in the future with your DIY projects. So thank you very much for watching again and hopefully I'll see you soon. Cheers.